Hi everyone, Ian here. Um, so this scene isn't exactly a masterpiece, but it does show off a couple of cool techniques that I wanted to demo. Uh, one of which is that it uses our line primitive, which is a just a just a, a cool shape that um, not many people know about. So I just wanted to show that off. And then also there's a, like a text countdown going off, which is quite fun. Um, if I um, yeah, if I set that to zero actually, and um, then just position this zero. There's a kind of like this is the line primitive. Um, so I just wanted to show you how to set that up and. Um, yeah, um, hopefully it will be of use to um, uh, to some of you. So let's jump into a new scene and then to create a line primitive, we can either add it from the add elements window. It, in here, it's called basic line. So you just type in basic line and you can add it from here or you can alt click on the line tool here and that will create a basic line for you. Now, um, there are three types of line. Uh, so we've got the Bezier straight line, which is what we've got now, or we've got a spiral. So here's a spiral. Um, you can um, make the spiral smoother by increasing the number of sides if you want to. And then you can, you know, animate this if you want to do all that kind of stuff. Anyway, we're not interested in that. What we're interested in is the Bezier today. And uh, we've got the start position for the Bezier, which is um, in X and Y here. And then we've got an end position for the Bezier, which is in X and Y here. Um, so uh, what we can do is we can uh, take this basic line and we can add it to a duplicator. Hold Alt, click on the duplicator, we make lots of them. Let's just choose the point distribution, uh, which just puts um, everything on top of each other. Um, so. Um, the duplicator isn't actually, it's just making copies of things. It's not actually um, distributing them. Uh, and we can close it out for now. Then on the on the Bezier, uh, what we can do is we can start adding behaviors to control where the positions of the, uh, of the Bezier lines go. So for example, let's um, turn Y to zero for the start position and the end position for uh, for now. Um, and then when we move this, move the X's to a position that we're kind of happy with, let's um, let's right click on start position, go add behavior. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll add a stagger to the Y. And um, then we'll jump into the stagger. So click on the connection icon, go through to the stagger, and then we'll set a maximum up here of whatever, um, 300 and then minus 300, something like that. And so you get this, um, this setup. Um, and then what we need to do is we've got this offset, which is kind of the um, the control point for the Bezier. So if we just increase that, then you end up with this kind of shape. Uh, same uh, way that if we um, if we decrease the end position um, of, um, offset, uh, you can end up with this kind of shape. So you can create, um, yeah, the, this kind of, uh, this pattern that we had uh, in the other scene. Uh, in the other scene, actually, I had the end position, uh, the Y was being set with a random, um, uh, behavior. So if I just if I when instead of uh, just clicking on random, if you scoot over to the to the Y axis here and then click that, it'll, the random will only get connected to Y, which means only the Ys will be affected by that. So um, if you uh, just pop um, minus ten in the um, in the minimum box, and then you can just increase the strength there, and then you get this kind of uh, yeah this this um, kind of mess, this kind of order to chaos thing going on. And over on the duplicator, you can just up the point count to as, as many as you like, really. And then, of course, um, you can start doing things on the basic line with the stroke. So over on the stroke here, let's just get rid of the other UIs in here. So I'm on the basic line here on the stroke. Um, you can do things like, a, you can, well, you could give them random colors if you wanted to, or you could give them colors from, um, palette. Um, I've done enough demos of that in different videos, so let's not bother doing that. Um, but what we can also do is we can mess with the width. So um, we could have um, a random widths on a stroke here. So if you just put random in here. Um, so some of these are super thin and some of these are super thick. Uh, if you wanted to um, do that, um, uh, you could. Uh, just have a minimum, let's have a minimum of one. And then yeah, we go up to uh, 12 if you want to do that kind of thing. Actually, there's go to a maximum of 10. Um, uh, also, uh, you can do trims. So obviously we've got the trim in and we've got the uh, out as well. Um, now you can just animate that. So what we could do is we could animate the start going from uh, 100. So for example, go for 100 to, um, to uh, zero. So this is our animation, right? And then on the duplicator, all, all we need to do there is go and add a stagger for the for the time offset um, and then put minus 20 in here. And then you've got this going on. You've got this kind of super complex animation. Um, and yeah, that's it. So, so basically you could animate these things like that. If you wanted to um, just, just go nuts, all the settings will, um, will uh, all the settings in the stroke will, will take a, um, a behavior. Um, all settings everywhere in cavalry will take behavior. So um, yeah, you can just um, uh, 
go for your life in there and uh, and uh, yeah you could even use the dash patterns and things if you wanted to like I was using in the other in the other video so the other thing that I wanted to to show was um the um the countdown that was in that uh, that scene and you you can just do a countdown really really easily um so text shapes and cavalry so I alt clicked on the text tool to get a text shape um hopefully you're familiar with that by now um and um if I if I just I'm just going to set the alignment to center center um and actually you'll probably want left alignment for when you're doing what I'm about to do just so that it doesn't jump around um and um in in all, all tech shapes and cavalry have um the two options for ways to change text first of all we have text generator string generator sorry and a string generator will generate a piece of text so it will generate uh, a random number or generate a hash or generate a hex value something like that and um, then the other way uh, of, of changing text is these manipulators, so string manipulator, manipulators. And manipulators are things for like scrambling text or for truncating it or transitioning it and that kind of thing. So, so manipulators will take what's already here and do something with it, and a generator will put something here. So that's the difference between those two things. So let's add a string generator. By default, it sets a hash because I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why and I did it. Um, so uh, let's choose value, uh, which is probably the far more common and probably should be the default. <laughs> Um, and there's a few things that you can do um, with this. I mean, we can put a, a number in here, like um, uh, a thousand or whatever. Uh, and um, the padding is the um, uh, the amount of zeros uh, on the front end. So let's just uh, leave that at four. And the precision is the number afterwards. And then uh, you can put a delimiter in if you go if you have really large numbers. So if I um, yeah, there you go. So uh, this puts the 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 comma in after the, the um, after the one in the thousand. Uh, a prefix if you want. Let's put um, a pound sign in if you want that kind of thing. And yeah, and then there's a multiplier. The multiplier. Why a multiplier? Well, the multiplier <laughs> um, is just a super simple, lazy way um, of you being able to. If I just add a keyframe down here, uh, of you being able to animate the um, animated count countdown. So um, yeah, you can basically yeah do that, and that's um, that's basically how you do a countdown. Now the the way that I was doing the countdown in the other uh, in the uh, scene that I showed you at the beginning was um, uh, as you can probably guess, I put the text into a duplicator, <laughs> and I had it on a linear distribution set to vertical and. And I probably I probably had this on step and um, I did I did lots and then what will have happened is on the string generator here uh, this number will have been a random number so well, I've gone and done a random uh, like that and um, obviously the random number needs to have a nine 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 in there and then that gives us lots and lots of lots of random numbers and then they'll all animate down to nothing and then you know like like I did with the um, uh, with all the other animations <laughs> you can put a stagger or a random on the time offset if you want to have this animation happen at different times um, yeah and that's basically how you can have lots of numbers counting down um yeah if for whatever reason anyway so that's it those are the two techniques that i would show um in this video and um, yeah hope you find them useful